With Notion's big update in May came Notion Projects, and although it's been heavily promoted since launching, many users are still wondering whether it's a new feature, or if it's a template, or if it's just a philosophical framework. And in fact, it's a little bit of all three. So let's take a look at the key components of Notion Projects and my recommendations for getting the most out of the system. And on Notion VIP, you'll find a template that's pre-configured with all of my recommended enhancements. I'll link to that from the description of this video. Notion Projects is a set of pre-configured databases. If you browse to templates from your sidebar, you can choose projects and tasks or projects, tasks, and sprints. And the concept of sprints comes from the agile project management methodology. And traditionally, sprints divide a project's tasks into phases for focused iterative and agile planning and implementation. And within Notion projects, sprints serve that same purpose, but they can include tasks from multiple projects. When you choose the set of Notion projects databases you wanna use, Notion will add them to your workspace and they'll be pre-configured with properties and pre-populated with sample content. And among those properties are relation properties that form a parent-child relationship between projects and tasks. And if you decide to include sprints, they too serve as parents in a parent-child relationship with tasks using relation properties. For the most part, these configurations utilize features available anywhere in Notion. In theory, you could construct the Notion projects system from scratch, although some of these features were introduced at the same time as Notion projects. That includes the unique ID property, as well as the AI autofill capability for text properties. Now, one notable exception is the new Sprints feature, which is currently limited to Notion projects, but after a beta testing phase, it too will become available in the broader Notion ecosystem. And conveniently, when you delete one database in the Notion project system, Notion will ask if you want to delete the other databases. And given the way they're connected, if you replace any of these databases, I recommend replacing the whole system to preserve their relations. So let's take a closer look at these Notion projects databases, beginning with the projects database. Now the system will evolve, but in its current form, the projects database includes four views. You can view projects within a table grouped by status, as a timeline with visible dependencies, within a full table, or as a board containing only the projects owned by you, the user who signed in to Notion. And then a few properties worth calling out are the completion property, which is a roll-up property. It displays the percentage of the project's related tasks that are marked done. And I actually prefer the name progress for this property. That's among the changes you'll find in my template version of Notion projects. And then the is blocking and blocked by properties are relation properties. Is blocking is what informs the dependencies in the timeline view. And then the template for when you open a project as a page displays its related tasks in two places. They're in a page section, and then they're within a linked database with two views, including a board that groups the tasks by status. Now, to me, this is redundant, so my version hides that page section. And then the body of the project template also includes an about this project section. Moving on to the tasks database, it currently offers two views, both of which are tables. The default view groups tasks by project, and the other displays all tasks in a full table. And a notable property of the tasks database is task ID. This is a unique ID property type, which debuted at about the same time as Notion projects. So when you configure the property, you specify a short capitalized prefix. In this tasks database, that prefix is TAS. And then for each item in the database, the property is populated with the prefix followed by a unique integer. So that integer increments by one as each item is created. And if an item is deleted, its integer is never reused. When working with databases, it's important for each item to have a unique identifier. And before this unique ID property, we could create a unique identifier using a formula property with the ID function. But this new property type is much simpler and much cleaner. And then the parent task and subtasks properties are reciprocal relation properties that allow you to divide a task into smaller tasks. 
Within table and list views, you can enable sub items. So items that are assigned sub items become toggles that display their sub items within them. And I'm surprised to find this configuration unutilized in Notion projects. The Notion VIP template enables sub items. And then the summary property uses another feature that debuted alongside Notion projects, and that's AI autofill for database properties. So what that means is that for text properties, you can enable AI autofill with one of three objectives. It can summarize the inner page contents. It can extract specified information, such as the people mentioned within the page. Or you can specify a custom prompt for it to complete by referencing the inner page content. And then you have the option for the autofill to regenerate when the inner page is updated. And again, I'm surprised to find this option disabled. My template enables it. And then the GitHub pull requests property is another feature unique to Notion projects that will likely expand to the broader ecosystem. It really applies to software development teams. So for that specific audience, you can link tasks in Notion to GitHub pull requests and then automate updates when changes occur. And the templates within the tasks database are also geared towards software teams. There's one for each of the three types of action items commonly managed by software engineers. That includes tasks, bugs, and feature requests. And the only differences among these templates are the pre-populated headings within the page. Now, as you may know, I'm a fanatic for toggles. So my template version of Notion projects converts these headings to toggle headings. And what may surprise me most about the Notion project system is that the tasks database excludes any way of indicating within the properties the type of task. In other words, whether it's a task, a bug, or a feature request. That'd be a helpful visual, and it'd also enable grouping and filtering. So my template includes a task type property that populates automatically when you choose the corresponding template. Then the task's type is displayed in all views that use the card format, including the board within the project template. And then as I mentioned, sprints come from the agile project management methodology. They allow you to plan iteratively, focus on one subset of tasks at a time, and stay agile. And traditionally, sprints map to a single project, but in Notion projects, a sprint can include tasks from multiple projects, and I think I like that. If you choose to include sprints in your application of Notion projects, Notion will add a sprints database, along with a special type of page called sprint board. So the sprints database displays all sprints within a table, and then a second view uses the timeline layout. And like projects, sprints form a parent-child relationship with tasks. So the tasks property within the sprints database is a relation property. And that enables the total tasks and completed tasks properties to perform their calculations. Their roll-up properties, which depend on relations. Total tasks counts the number of related tasks. And completed tasks displays the percentage of those tasks marked done. And the page template for the sprints database closely resembles the projects template. It displays related tasks within a page section, which my template hides, and then it displays them again in a linked database, which is more useful. And then the sprint template also includes an outline for planning notes. Now let's talk about that special sprint board page. It contains three linked views of tasks with some special features that are unavailable elsewhere in Notion. And I'd actually find this system to be more streamlined if these views were part of the tasks database rather than a standalone page. But because of the page's unique features, we're unable to recreate those views within tasks. So the first view is really the one that's most notable. It displays tasks for the current sprint. And the name of the view dynamically includes the name of that current sprint. So it's a board layout and it groups tasks by status. Those are the columns. And then it subgroups them by projects. Those are the toggles. And at the top right of the view, you'll see a special button called complete sprint. When you click it to advance to the next sprint, you'll see a module that allows you to specify which sprint to update to current. You can also modify that sprint's date range. And if the sprint you're completing contains any uncompleted tasks, you can move them to the next sprint or to the backlog, the backlog being a repository for tasks without a sprint assigned. And then the sprint planning view is a table with a group or toggle for the current sprint, the next sprint, and the backlog, which again 
contains tasks without an assigned sprint. And then finally, the backlog view displays only those tasks without an assigned sprint. So before wrapping up, let's quickly recap the recommendations that I've mentioned, and then I'll offer just a few more. You can implement them selectively on your own, or you can grab that pre-configured template from Notion VIP. Within the projects database, rename the completion property to progress. For the projects database template, hide that redundant page section that displays related tasks and do the same in the sprints database template. In the tasks database, enable auto update for the AI generated summary property, and then add a property called task type where you can choose task, bug, or feature requests. And for all views across the system that display tasks as cards, show that task type property and then update each task template to populate its task type automatically. And within those task templates, convert the headings to toggle headings. And for all table views within the tasks database and the sprint board page, enable sub items. And then I also recommend that you show, hide, or hide when empty the properties you see when opening an item as a page. That applies to every database. And I also strongly encourage you to sort every view of every database with enough specificity to dictate the position of each item. Otherwise, databases can behave in unexpected ways. And lastly, I like to create an admin view in every database with no filtering and all properties visible. That helps streamline administration and bulk editing. And again, all of these recommendations are pre-configured in the template on Notion VIP. But everything we've discussed here concerns an isolated Notion projects system. And the most important modification you can make is connecting that system to your broader ecosystem of master databases. That gets back to my number one principle for using Notion, which is to structure all information in related master databases and then access that information through contextual views. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'll link to it from the description of this video. And for the tasks database specifically, my dedicated task framework includes a handful of additional features that you'll find useful. That includes a method for prioritizing tasks automatically, properties for context and time slot, as well as an automated alert system. And we dive deep into all these features and frameworks in Notion A to Z. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to join us so that you can make the most of Notion.